ever see a rear sliding door Japanese 4x4 mini truck unless you live in Japan chances are you haven't so what you see right here is a 2013 Daihatsu cargo deck van G edition what the G stands for I still don't know it could indeed it, it's a japanese firm and it's marketed just for japan it's probably grando but knowing them they'll probably call it the grando uh, japanese is weird even when it's spoken in english don't get me started <laughs> I picked up my dick van just about a year back with zero intention of modifying it. I just needed a fuel efficient four door, four by four with a second row with seat belts in it so that I can put the kids in the back. However, like any enthusiast of automotive inclination that's actually worth their salt, it didn't take me very long to recognize that the stock chassis on this truck really needs some help. And here's why. The majority of the things that I dislike about my Dolly Hot Sea Dick Van have everything to do with aesthetics, obviously, and performance. Also, kind of a bit obvious. While Daihatsu's decision to slap a sewing machine for an engine into this runt is actually par for the course for any Japanese K vehicle because by law they can't be over 660cc and there go are three cylinders. It is the transmission on the vehicle and its lack of a locking differential that bothers me a bit. I haven't run into too many issues with it, but it sure would be nice when I'm mucking around in the mud to have more on that to come. And then uh, there is the uh, aesthetic side, which uh, can be amended, but because of Japanese law, it, the vehicle cannot be widened more than nine millimeters, if memory serves. And then uh, yeah, you can't throw a big ass brush guard on the front of it and you know, a rooftop tent and a whole bunch of other stuff without it meeting what is called shaken, which is Japanese inspection, and that is required every two years. So, knowing this full well, I have to choose my modifications very carefully, especially in regard to the external structure of the vehicle. Something that I find sucks about this truck and sucks a lot is uh, the wheel wells, uh, the fenders, and everything that go into it are off of the Daihatsu cargo, much like the rest of the truck. And so it doesn't really have a lot of room compared to other Japanese K trucks, which uh, are typically not plastic, but are metal and have a little bit more area space inside for you to play with with wheel and tire selections. The same can be said for the rear, whereas in a lot of Japanese K trucks, it's well, there is no bumper really. It's just a metal sheet in the back with some taillights slapped in it. The deck van has a plastic van bumper off of, again, the cargo van. And ergo, about this point where the light is and down is just pretty much dead space. You've got a couple of recovery hooks on each end that are just bolted in, but even they don't help at all with, well, <laughs> breakover clearance when it's time to. Hit that departure angle. But a hefty portion of what I despise about this vehicle has to do with its interior. Much of which, unfortunately, I'm not really going to touch because I don't feel like replacing entire door cards and things of that nature on a $5,000 farm truck that I'm just going to mess up anyway, shall we say. But, oh, the interior on this thing is disgusting and i'm not just talking about me failing to vacuum the damn thing out after a year of use and abuse let the tour of my daihatsu deck van's interior atrocities 
begin. The entire door card is cut straight out of 1992. Cheap plastics and all. Mm. Yeah, window switches ain't much better. Oh yeah, that's right. They're only speakers in the front of the vehicle. Not in the back. Mm. Well, at least it has a CD player. I'm not relying on cassette tapes. I don't care what all the hipsters say. A gauge cluster that shows you, well, just that and that alone. Not all at once, mind you. Let's not worry about this little guy. He goes off. Actually, come to think of it, all that goes off. 1992 called back. They were wanting to know if we liked their HVAC system they gave us. I still have zero idea what this is for. It's either for holding your pen or your cigarette. Coin holder that does not hold coins very well. They actually bounce out every time I drive somewhere. Very useful instruction manual. Ooh. Affixed to the world's flimsiest visor. An equally old school dome light. Intended only for the front seats. Screw the rear bench. Make it live in the darkness. Under seat front storage? What's that? Oh, that's right. The cab over design. We got an engine under our asses. Would you like an adjustable steering column? <laughs> that was a joke. You don't get that either. Adjustable rear seat backs? We don't need no stinking adjustable rear seat backs. Let their spines be straight. Various gripes aside, it is actually the interior of this Daihatsu deck van that actually drew me in in the first place, and I actually enjoy, um, despite all of its inevitable shortcomings. Arguably my favorite and actually come to think of it, mandatory portion of this vehicle is its second row, which has seat belts. Almost all Japanese mini trucks are a single cab design, or if they do have a second row, it's about wide enough uh, to fit maybe Danny DeVito's pinky finger. But if you look at the interior on this sucker, you do have, sure enough, two seats in the back with seat belts. And it's got a fair deal of leg room, surprisingly, for what you get. I'm six foot flat, and I fit in here, oh, I wouldn't say just fine, but I fit. And then you have all sorts of storage behind it, because remember, this is based off of a delivery van that just got hacked up. So you know what that means, right? Not only does the seat fold down, and it gives you a little bit more space in the back for accessing all your farm gear, what have you, It'll also fold flat, so you have an actual full rear storage space. Both ends are also exposed at all times, so you still have access to things like your snow brush or your box of tie-down gear. Another interior perk that I really like is all the headspace. This is a high roof vehicle, technically, so you have a whole bunch of headroom up top. I'm six foot flat and I got tons of space, even underneath my cargo net. A few other quirky but kind of cool interior features on the vehicle that I've just kind of grown accustomed to include a full-size glove box that is insanely large, for how small the vehicle is at least. Yes, that is a headlight leveling switch. Kind of useful when you live in the mountains and drive on back roads a lot. Perfectly positioned grab handles. Yes, R at the proper angle for pulling yourself in and holding on to when things get dicey on the trail. Monolithically proportioned rear windows for fresh air, but only lowered low enough so that the kids can look out but dare not climb further. <laughs> Well, prior to a massive wind gust coming along and toppling over my tripod and subsequently destroying my wireless mic receiver, we were in the process of discussing the various perks of my 2013 Daihatsu deck band that I absolutely adore or at least appreciate. 
where we had left off was with overhangs and approach angles. Being that this is a cab over design vehicle, I don't have much of a front overhang at all. And so I can see pretty much damn near anything. Yes, the mirror is a manual fold in, fold out affair, but no problem. I can see very well over this driver's side wheel. So I think with a little bit of a mirror on that end that's uh, fixed to the front or a undercarriage camera attached, I can see pretty much anything when I'm off-roading especially. But one of my favorite things about this vehicle is its packaging. It's a four-door pickup truck that isn't monolithic. It's actually about the size of a side-by-side, -side at least in width, and a side-by-side -side with air conditioning at that. It also doesn't weigh anything. It's lighter and all hell. Now, granted, being so small does have its setbacks, especially when you've got a whole second row that is essentially the second row of a van. That translates to a very, very, very short bed. It's tiny. It's actually, last I checked, this actually was the world's smallest truck bed. And without the addition of these chains that I've affixed to the tailgate, which normally the tailgate would flip down, but not completely vertically, it was just in the way, um, you don't have that much space whatsoever. So that's pretty much it when it comes to perks and pitfalls of this vehicle, which segues into our discussion of what we want to do to this puny little pickup. How are we going to turn him into a, uh, I wouldn't say hardcore, but a little more capable off-road vehicle, as well as uh, increase his overlanding capabilities. Japan's longest public off-road trail literally is the road that connects to my house behind here. That's one of the trailheads. So, I want to take my kid camping. I want to go up on the mountainside and go hunting with my buddies. I want to go places in this little sucker. And the way that he stands at this moment, I can only go to, I'd say, 10 to 15% of where I want to go, both off-road and up here on the land that I'm developing. That being said, it's safe to say that there are always going to be limitations when modifying something that's really just a delivery van with the back hacked out. I recognize this, and I don't expect it to turn into the most hardcore overlanding vehicle because it never will be. But what it can be is something that is very practical and very useful off-road. So I, I said, it's my daily driver. It's a $5,000 farm truck that I really don't care if it gets scratched up, dinged up, um, and muddy as all hell along the way. Furthermore, I'm incredibly thrilled to announce that we already have a bunch of sponsors lined up for this build, some of which you will be very familiar with. This is not your common K-Truck build. You don't see a lot of Daihatsu deck vans on the road in Japan, and you definitely don't see very many of them being modified. So this is going to be a fun one. Do a little, something a little bit different, and hopefully in the process, uh, have a little fun along the way. So stay tuned because part two of our 2013 Daihatsu Cargo Deck Van 4x4 Yinchan build will be coming at you here shortly.